TV Grace presents the inexpressible words of God, the gospel of grace on the lips of Jesus Christ men. Abba Father. Let's go to the historical book of the one that Luke wrote, the book of Acts chapter 24. 24. Book of Acts, chapter 24. This is the story of a governor that had the privilege to speak with the Apostle Paul when he was arrested, that he was on his way to Rome. So then the governor had to hear the accusations because they were accusing Paul. He was a pestilence and had been bothering all of the Jews with his doctrine. And finally, he heard the case and gave these recommendations. Book of Acts 24, verse 23 through 27. And he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty and told him not to forbid any of his friends to provide for or visit him. And after some days, when Felix, the governor, came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ Jesus. Now, as he reasoned, Paul, about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was frightened or afraid. Listen, with a Jewish wife and Felix being knowledgeable of Moses. And look at what Paul spoke to him about. Three things. Righteousness, self-dominion or self-control, and the judgment to come. Say three things. Says Felix was afraid and answered, Go away for now. When I have a convenient time, I will call for you. Meanwhile, he also hoped that money would be given him by Paul that he might release him. Therefore, he sent for him more often to converse with him about after. But after two years, Porcius Festus succeeded Felix, and Felix, wanting to do the Jews a favor, left Paul bound. That's for, you know, wanting to do a favor to the Jews. They kept Paul in jail. Now, there are three things here that Paul thought were important for a leader to hear. Righteousness. The righteousness. Self-dominion. Say self-dominion. You know that Paul says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of self-dominion. Say, I have the spirit of self-dominion. The governor was frightened because if Paul spoke of righteousness, he must have mentioned Romans chapter 4, verse 6. You want to look at that? Go to the following book, Romans 4, 6. Why was he frightened? Look at what verse 6 says of the book of Romans. Those that don't have a Bible, share it with your neighbor beside you or hear me out. And David speaks likewise of the blessedness of the man to whom God credits righteousness apart from what? Works. Righteousness apart from what? Works. Does Moses offer righteousness Apart from works? No. He says, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. He that does it, pays for it. And if you fail, you liquidate it. So now Paul says that David in the scriptures prophesied that there was a covenant in which God declares you righteous without a single work. Say, without any work. Say, I am the righteousness of God. He was frightened. He was frightened. And this is impossible. We're speaking 2,000 years ago. Today, I speak of that and people are frightened 2,000 years after. 
No, no, brother, if you fall and misbehave, don't get dressed, you're going to hell. So then you're not righteous because for you to enter the kingdom of heaven, you need all of the righteousness possible. But we are people who are weak with a weak body and you're never going to reach the demand of all of the righteousness you need. You're going to be 20 years trying and one day you ruin it and now you're no longer righteous and now you want to behave again and the next day you fall, you feel guilty, you feel you don't please God and you're never going to arrive. You are riding in an, uh, in an electric corridor in an airport, but in reverse, in an electric conveyor. You're never going to arrive. You're going to fall on your face. That's why the evangelicals are frustrated because they walk 10 steps forward and 12 backward. 10 forward, those are the Catholics, the evangelicals, everybody that way because they don't know what Paul ministered to Felix the governor. When he spoke to him of righteousness, he said, Felix, in this covenant, after Christ resurrected, God sees you just like him. The same holiness without works. But how? Confessing that Jesus Christ on the cross did it all. He was frightened by that. So then he told them, what, if, what about the behavior? What do you say about that? Because my wife is Jewish. And there, you know, you can't eat meat. You have to keep the Sabbath day. You can't drink coffee. You can't eat dirty. You can't eat, you know, certain seafood. No, that don't exist. Now it's self-dominion. And what is self-control? I was speaking this morning of a case of a couple where she confessed to my wife. She said, listen, my husband was in the religious system and he behaved well, but he went through some challenges and he went back to drinking and he's out of control. Uh, so then, what are you doing? No, I delivered him to God. Great thing. If you deliver him to God, God does nothing. You have to deliver him to the angels that God has to operate. But first, you have to get to know the covenant so the angels could serve you. So then, you spoke to him incorrectly. It's an insult to ask God for help. Don't you see that God already helped you? What God uses are angels at your service. And if you don't like the angels, well, then you have nothing from God. <laughs> so then I told her, listen, I personally, right now, you are ministering to me because what happens to me is that the angels give me self-control. How do the angels give me self-control? I was a man when I was young that was very vicious. Now, there are people that are not vicious because we are all different. We have different tastes. But I didn't have, say, self-control. Don't add religion here. Say, self-control. Say, my apostle ministered to a governor righteousness without works and self-control and that's what my husband needs apostle self-control no 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 he should not touch not even a beer you are prohibiting and when you prohibit that's not self-control i today have the ability you know what it is on a saturday after you work the lawn and you're sweating and they give you a nice cold beer. Oh, I love that. Now, without self-control, I drink 24 bottles. With self-control, I drink one or two and you begin to get full because self-control. What did God give us? A spirit of what? Self-dominion. Say, I have self-dominion. I do not have commandments. I have no prohibitions. Everything is lawful, but not everything edifies. Not everything is beneficial. Self-dominion regulates my life. 
And if I have to drink my beer, I drink it with a clean conscience. And sometimes, I don't want, maybe it's not a beer, maybe it can be a good wine or maybe a, a shot of whiskey. Apostle, and you're saying that from a pulpit to all the nations? People must be liberated. Religions have done a lot of damage. You know that no one has dared to speak this way in 2,000 years? Leaders are hypocrites. You know what they do? You know what they do? They prohibit it that the brothers drink. Alcohol is not welcome in our congregation, but they hide and take a drink. That's why Jesus said, rightly so, these hypocrites put a burden on people they themselves cannot carry. Now, if your husband has self-dominion, are you going to prohibit him? No, because he has self-control. So then he enjoys according to, because you can't be a hypocrite here. Here, you have to have transparency. Say transparency. The spirit of self-control, of love, and of power allowed me to say as my apostle everything is lawful but not everything is beneficial say not everything is beneficial you know the matrimonies that suffer because the wife or husband are consistently pressuring and pressuring so then the wives and husbands even with their children, you have to discover before entering prohibitions, because prohibitions get you nowhere. That destroys matrimonies. You know why? Because you have to present your husband, your wife, instead of nagging each other. Listen, with your confession, you say, angels, I say that my husband is exercising self-control, that you're educating him. And you're going to see a different glory. Well, the governor was frightened. <laughs> this guy's crazy. What are you talking about? But you're not bearing witness of Moses any longer? No, Moses is the God of this world. He's ruined everything. That Judaism, those Ten Commandments or the 607 ruined the world. No, now that he's resurrected, it's another spirit. It is righteousness that we are perfect with one offering, that we have peace with God, that we can say, Daddy, that means, Abba, Father, thank you. I don't have to be bound to nothing, that now it is a spirit of power, of love, and self-dominion. Oh, apostle, but that causes harm. And why do they tell me I look young? Huh? No, nothing. Paul one day told Timothy, Timothy, what's going on with you? No, I'm healed, but what's going on with your stomach? No, it's, it seems like the water in this region has caused harm. So drink a little wine because it, it helps you out with that. And he told them wine because there weren't any other brand. <laughs> I'm sure he would have uh, recommended another code, you know. <laughs> because wine was, in those days, what existed, right? Wine, nothing else. That comes from the grape of the one Jesus drank or the one Jesus made for the wedding. Good wine. Listen, stop being religious. I don't want religious people around me. They ruin my day. I enjoy my day tremendously, so some religious person comes and ruins it. Why do you think Paul says, listen, those from Jerusalem come to spy on our liberty. Those people are always spying with their guilty conscience. 
So then Paul thought that a governor must be spoken to in this way. I'm going to speak to him about righteousness apart from works. I'm going to speak to him not of prohibitions, but of self-dominion. And the third point I'm going to throw at him now is the strongest one, the coming judgment, not the second coming of Jesus. Don't confuse the coming judgment with the second coming of Christ. The second coming is coming to transform our bodies. And if it's coming, it isn't rapturing or exiting. If it's coming, it's to stay here with us. The second coming comes to transform our bodies in the likeness of the body of Christ to stay like that forever. Now, the coming judgment, what it means is that the Apostle Paul said, look, what I preach has frightened you. That is why I am in prison. These Jews are frightened. And I am not going to be able to teach it, but I'm going to leave it written. But there comes a time in history at the final trumpet where God is going to use these teachings to judge, to clarify all things in the future. A coming judgment is coming. Romans 2.16. Look at it there. Romans 2.16. Of this, Romans 2.16, Paul spoke to the governor about that frightened him. Say, it frightened him. Say, it doesn't frighten me because I am of truth. And if there is someone that's frightened here, well, I don't know what we're going to do with you. Well, don't come until the horror goes away. Don't return until your mind is illuminated and those harmful traditions that your grandparents taught you and the priests and all those good people, good people, what they caused was harm to all nations with so many lies. Verse 16, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of man by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. There was a day that was to come where Paul says that God was going to judge people with his gospel. What am I doing here tonight? Judging what? Your secrets. I am speaking to you in white and black, without religion and without covering. As I'm telling you that we are the salt of the world that we are not religious people, that we are people in self-dominion, that we can go to any party. Oh, that I don't go to parties because I am a Christian. You're no good. Don't go anywhere because you're not any good. In your company, there is a party. Oh, I'm Christian. You're no Christian. A Christian goes and bears witness. My children are Christian and they cannot partake of the prom night because they are Christians. They are chameleons. If they were Christians, they would partake with self-control. Say, I go anywhere with self-control. And I go to the parties and I'll go to the beach wherever I want to go because everything is lawful with self-control. I'm saying if you have that spirit, because that is something you feel within you. That is something you feel and you take part and with a clean conscience. Naturally, don't wait on these reverends to applaud this message here in Miami. They're going to talk pestilence about us. Those people live the way they want to live. They don't know of the spirit we possess. They're still with Moses prohibiting Paul didn't bear witness of Moses. To the contrary, if you read the book of Acts chapter 24, verse 14, look at what it says regarding what Paul ministered to the governor. Speaking with the governor, it says, But this I confess unto you, 
that after the way which they call heresy, say they call heresy, for us it's the truth. The religious people say that we are heretics. They call me a heretic. It says they call it heretic. So worship I, the God of my father, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets and have hope towards God, which they themselves also allow that they shall be a resurrection of the just and unjust. So I also keep a conscience clear um, before God and man. And I came to my nation to give offerings. And as I was there, the Jews found me purified in the temple, not with a multitude or an uproar. uproar. They ought to have been here before you if they have something against me or else let these or those who are here themselves unless it is for this one statement which i cried out standing among them concerning the resurrection so then felix having heard these things more adequate says he adjourned the proceeding and said when leisure the commander comes down i will make a decision on your case so now paul that was blameless said it's no longer that it's righteousness self-dominion and the judgment to come gospel that i preach it's what paul spoke about the judgment to come because in that judgment, all of the secrets of man will be judged. And to judge, it isn't to condemn. To judge is to clarify all things such as they are. Look at what first letter to the Corinthians 4, 5 says. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will manifest the counsel of the heart and then shall every man have praise of God until whom comes the Lord and how is the Lord coming with knowledge with the gospel this is not the coming to transform the bodies this is the coming to clarify the intentions of man's heart that judgment that was to come we are seeing it now that's why paul told felix the coming judgment because it had not arrived i'm going to write it but it is a judgment that is to come where in all the the religions the truth will be uncovered and today you are a witness of these things that are being clarified i declare you blessed and full of self-dominion let's stand and greet your brother self-dominion not prohibitions